All right, I'm going to go ahead and call this work session to order on the Angel Fund. Let's we'll start with introductions on this side. Forrest Dunbar. Thanks, Alex. Crystal Kennedy. John Middleton. Felix Rivera. Joe Pete Morrison. Aaron Lockett. Pete Peterson. So. Fred Dyson. All right. Um, so, this was an item that at some previous meeting, perhaps during the budget, there was interest in having a work session on. So, that's why we're here. Turn it over to you. So, I'm going to start. Oh, sure. Mr. Oh, yes. Chair, Alex Lipka, Chief Fiscal Officer. I want to start really by thanking the Assembly for their vision uh, seven years ago in 2012 when you unanimously approved this. Uh, which was a uh, statewide, a federal uh, initiative to provide uh, entrepreneurial capital to people who do not otherwise have access to <coughs> entrepreneurial capital. And Joe and Aaron are going to walk through with you the history of it from going forward. But I, you know, without your vision, we wouldn't be here today. So thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, uh, Seattle Slipka. Um, yeah, I think. Um, in the right thing, I click in this area. Uh, thanks to the Anchorage Assembly for having us, we really appreciate it. But briefly covering our mission, uh, we're an evergreen fund that, has, that does three things. One, we put capital into this market uh, for businesses that are headquartered in with significant operations in, or which serve <coughs> potentially significant economic benefit to Anchorage with an entrepreneurial focus. Two, we strengthen risk, Alaska's risk capital and entrepreneurial ecosystem. We'll talk about that a little bit today. We want this to be um, rich ground and soil for entrepreneurs to grow companies in here in Alaska. And of course, we also work with early stage and disadvantaged businesses to help them grow. <coughs> Before we move on, I think we have some of our advisory committee members here. Um, and if it's all right uh, with the assembly through Chair Rivera, we'd like to ask if they could introduce themselves. Hi, Stephen yeah, Trimble. Oh, hi, Stephen Trimble, advisory committee member. What do you do? I uh, have a company called Arctic Solar Ventures. Hi, uh, Kevin Corwin, I'm an advisory committee member and a general partner at a venture capital firm based in Seattle called Nine Mile Labs. We invested in over 100 early stage startups. So, thank you. My name is Thomas Holder. I'm also a member of the advisory council. I've got a roughly 30 year background in uh, high tech. <coughs> And I'm Bill Papa, President and CEO of the Anchorage Economic Development Corporation. I've been in business for about four to six years in varying forms, and uh, I am co chair with Tom of the uh, Business Advisory Board. Great. So, the framework that we're operating with today is to talk a little bit about where we've been, where we are now, and where we see ourselves going uh, to serve the community of Anchorage and, of course, the municipality. So going through yesterday, we'll define what it is we do. 49th State Angel Fund is something of a complicated animal financially, so we'll talk about that. We'll also go through our seven years of history here operating out of the city. Uh, then talking about today, we'll cover the programs that we've built, some of the investments we've made. Uh, we'll, you've heard mostly about the team. We'll kind of just talk about why the overall team composition is really important. We'll talk about some of our quantitative and our qualitative wins. Finally, we'll also uh, close with a discussion of our, our strategic roadmap that takes us through year end 2021. Close it out and, and look forward to a great discussion with our assembly. Thank you so much for having us. So, what is the 49th State Angel Fund? It is a $12.7 million equity fund of funds. So, we don't go out and invest. What we do is we go out and we find talented private sector managers, or potentially talented private sector managers. We work with them to pool our capital with private sector capital to create an investment fund that will then go out and make investments. Uh, again, our mission, in parentheses, deploy capital to the market, strengthen the entrepreneurial ecosystem, help startups, right? Founded in 2012, uh, unanimous approval from the Anchorage Assembly, and funded by two streams. Originally, we were funded entirely through United States Treasury's State Small Business Credit Initiative, which was an offshoot of the Jobs Act. And today, we are founded from, or we are funded by the returns of our fund. We're funded by the returns of principal and income on the investments we've made, as, as well as interest income on our fund deposit. 
So <coughs> that is part of the nuts and bolts of what we are. And this is just a look at the business model. So any investment that we create takes a public dollar, matches it with a private dollar up front, 100% of the time. It goes into generally a pool uh, of that a third party fund manages. Uh, our smallest one might be $25,000 a year. Our largest one might be $4.25 million. Um, that would be our commitment. That fund then goes out and makes a variety of investments. Those investments also gain additional private capital out in the community. It's not just this fund that is funding that. So additional investment occurs and then uh, in startups and in entrepreneurship, we know that it's a high-risk endeavor. Uh, we know that 30% of all startups fail, 50% uh, return less than their invested capital. But the good news is some do well, and they return capital to their investors. Can I ask a question? Yes, Mr. Weddle. Um, so I just, okay, so you have, you put in a dollar, that some private company puts in a dollar, and you're one of these investment one, two, threes? No, we're, we're here, we're the public investor, okay. and so we, we cre help create this investment fund. This investment fund is managed by a third party private sector manager. They will go out and do at least five transactions, some will do more, and then those transactions will again secure additional private capital. You know, they're building a, uh, a, a mountain biking company, it needs more money. Some of those will be successful, and they'll pay back the investors. Okay, so you just started off, and you say, but before you can spend this money, you have to go get these additional investors. And then yes, before we invest, we lever the public dollar with the dollar of private sector investment. So the returns uh, pay for our operations. They also pay for the opportunity to reinvest. And later on, we'll talk about some of the new funds we've created with capital that has returned to the city. So, uh, but before we do that, let's talk about our history and kind of the three phases of our program. The first phase was our founding. And 2012 to 2014, um, you know, I think this allocation became available in 2012. Uh, and really, we were talking with the private sector about what can we do to support entrepreneurship in Alaska. And it took years to convince the private sector to run funds sort of for the benefit of the community returns and the financial returns uh, and kind of create this community chess play. So we created our first f four investment funds in the first few years of the program. And then, like any new company or endeavor, we contacted the market. Uh, and we found that this wasn't easy. There wasn't a lot of entrepreneurial activity that we saw. Uh, certainly the entrepreneurial ecosystem wasn't big, as big a couple years ago. And naturally, it was hard for our investors to invest their capital. Um, so that was 2015, and yet we saw some initial successes. We started seeing returns in 2016. So market contact, a little bit challenging to get the capital out, but we did see some returns in 2016. And then in 2017, a couple things happened. One was that we really focused on capital deployment of, this, <coughs> of our funds and er, uh, talked about the need to get the capital out. And that was difficult for our community to hear. Um, a focus on deployment uh, sort of created some turbulence that the 49th State Angel Fund had to weather, but we needed to see this capital deployed to benefit Alaska's entrepreneurs. 2018, we started seeing better results, and of course the community sentiment improved. We're a small community, everybody knows everybody, often in Alaska. And recently we've built new investment funds, uh, we've hired a wonderful associate after seven years, and we've created some really significant programs that benefit our community. So, uh, defining the 49th State Angel Fund a little more, it's important to really recognize, and I think that this is something that our entrepreneurial ecosystem needs to take to heart, is that outcomes matter. Uh, and this is why this matters, this is why this work matters. According to the University of Alaska Center for Economic Development, uh, 4,000 to 6,000 new jobs every year, most net new job growth in Alaska, follows the national pattern. New companies create it, right? Mature companies find ways to optimize, um, increase uh, results from employees, uh, minimize costs, but new companies need to grow, and that benefits our state. But we know this is hard. We know that the first few years of an investment activity like this 
are met with um, your initial losses and seeing challenges, and it takes time for the results to show. So this is just a typical venture capital J curve showing that after six years you're starting to see success, and that's where we sit now. Two notes that I'll make. Uh, the first is that we built this fund to be a permanent function of the municipality of Anchorage. We built it to show success, uh, recycle its capital, and to continue to invest in our community, delivering ongoing value. The other thing is that we've tried to do this a couple times in our state's history. In the 1990s, we had something called the Alaska Science and Technology Foundation. Uh, it was destroyed when we had an economic downturn. In the early 2000s, we had something called Alaska InvestNet. I think there was a congressional, um, a congressional allocation that occurred allowing for investments and to start ups here in Alaska. It expended its capital, it's gone. So when we started the 49th State Angel Fund, none of this was here, and there really wasn't a lot of activity in the space. So I'm gonna turn things over to my associate Aaron to talk about some of the new programs that we've been developing for the community. Yeah, so um, some one, one aspect of our job is continuing to touch base with thought leaders across the country to put together <coughs> programs that support founders and what we call ecosystem builders or economic developers. Um, so <coughs> we have been focused on lowering barriers to entry and um, increasing access. And that, that presents itself in a couple of different ways. The first one is the 10 buck lunch. Um, one thing we've heard across the country is that having a beer after work is super tough for a lot of entrepreneurs, especially parents. So we, we put together this, the, uh, we partnered with Alaska Investor Network to put on the 10 buck lunch. They um, pay the, any over, caterage, catering overage um, and our attendees pay $10. They show up, they have lunch, they meet a high quality and a high number of investors. And um, so far we've had about 30 <coughs> people show up to the last two. So this will be happening quarterly. The next one is the all call. This one is geared more towards um, ecosystem builders and developer and economic developers, where quarterly we get on the phone via Zoom and we just talk about all of the programs and events and things we want people to be aware of. Uh, we hope that this provides some cross pollination of ideas, some stronger coordination between the groups, so that we don't kind of conflict on event nights or um, you know just so we can coordinate better across the statewide uh, ecosystem. And then next is Pitch Fest. This, is, um, this year was our second year putting it on um, in conjunction with the Accelerate Alaska Conference. So about 10 or so entrepreneurs come and pitch their business idea, whether it's new or whether they're providing updates or growth, um, et cetera. So there are um, prizes at the end of Pitch Fest. Um, our, this year we, have, we partnered with Alaska Growth Capital they provided $500 to the winners, and then Beacon Media provided um, $1,500 in, um, in media services for the winners. And then Alaska Angel Conference, um, Kevin Croy uh, brought this to our organization. It's been, um, so last year, in or sorry, in 2018, we started working on um, the 2019 Angel Conference where we bring together new and inexperienced or curious investors, and they build a fund over 12 weeks. And there's a series of, um, leading up to this 12 weeks of fund building, there's three months of workshops that are free to attend and are statewide, they're held via Zoom. Um, so we, we increase education and our goal is to diversify and broaden the investor landscape throughout the entire state of Alaska. So Anchorage was the first host, 49 SAF, providing most of the um, operational and, um, I don't know, the, the, um, the thinking behind it with Kevin Croy volunteering heavily on this effort. So um, May in May 2019, we made a $115,000 investment in the winning company. Um, because on the other side of the fund building, 20 or more entrepreneurs are pitching and competing for the final fund. Um, so we made that investment, and then that culminated in a total of almost a quarter million dollars of investment because some of those new investors who have gone through the process continue to invest in other companies throughout in the state. 
and and all that on there for an eleven thousand contribution on our side of the investment. So quarter million dollar total financial impact, eleven thousand dollars was what we invested. Uh, in addition to significant program support, talking about the portfolio just a little bit, seven point four million dollars has gone into thirty one companies. Uh, I'll show you the investment funds that have done that in a moment. We have five point three million dollars. Um, that is in fund structures awaiting deployment, right? So the fund managers are making as prudent decisions as they can in this difficult market to invest in local companies on the equity side. That is our federal allocation, $12.744 million. Abundantly, fully obligated, it's either in companies or it's in fund structures waiting to go into companies. The good news, the exciting news is $1.68 million of returns. Uh, this is just under 23% of what we've deployed, 13% of the fund overall, and really just a couple years after operations have started in terms of investing. Uh, so that's a very promising sign. And these are the funds that have done the hard work. Uh, the Anchorage Opportunity Fund is run by uh, John Rubini, Mark Groloff, and Jimmy Miner, a trio of local businessmen affiliated with JL Properties uh, and other organizations. The Alaska Accelerator Fund, which was our state's first angel <coughs> investing group, founded in 2014, did 10 different transactions in startup companies. Anchorage Equity Partners, uh, which is downstream from that, making larger investments. The 49th Fund, also downstream from that, making larger investments. Launch Alaska, our state's first startup accelerator. And uh, following on the initial success of Anchorage Opportunity Fund 1, in 2019 we closed Anchorage Opportunity Fund 2, a new $3 million fund that will deploy capital into the Anchorage economy. As for our returns, we've taken some of it and helped create that financial impact. Aaron talked about the total $115,000 um, financial impact of the last Angel Conference, which did generate an additional investment we didn't foresee. Uh, the Alaska Seed Fund, we matched money with Wells Fargo. That money went into 10 local startups uh, yeah, across Alaska. And the Set Up Shop Initiative. Um, I like to think that we were instrumental both in helping seed some of the thought leadership and have conversations with people like Mihailo Tamale from um, Minnesota and Twin Cities Neighborhood Development Centers interfacing with the ALC ACLT. We've invested in their fund that will invest in Mountain View and diverse entrepreneurs. So, this is the same look at that capital, but I'm gonna go a little bit more into the returns and, and what that looks like and how it can help fuel our program. $1.682 million of returns as discussed. Um, the, the funds on deposit have been carefully managed and carefully invested in low risk securities like treasuries. Uh, so we are sitting on $385,000 of program income, interest income. Uh, we have reinvested, we have commitments of $261,000. Uh, we have expended over three years just over a half million dollars on program operations. And under the guidance of the CFO, uh, he has advised us to keep a three-year operating reserve on hand. That puts us just over $1.1 million. So at minimum, without any additional returns, which are incredibly difficult to forecast, we're still kind of coming out of the early part of that curve, we intend to invest another $163,000 in the local economy and helping create multiples of private sector investment as well. Uh, we track key performance indicators on a bi-monthly basis with our advisory committee that's here. Um, one of them is simply, are we putting capital out into the market? 7.4 million has been invested as discussed. We try to see deployment of one to $2 million every year, prudent management. We also track our diversification. If you look at the 31 companies in our portfolio, really it's kind of 10 equal sized chunks. So we're uh, about diversified to the tune of 10 different investments. And then we track three other things, but I wanna go into these more in depth in a bit um, because I think these are some of our strong qualitative lens. We, we track the economic benefit. What kind of private sector stimulus and investment are we encouraging? We track job creation. And of course, we also track our returns. I guess we already covered that. But I'll turn things over to Aaron to talk about the team and why the composition is important. Well, I think to start, you know, Joe and myself. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm the newest and only employee that's, that's been hired in seven years, happy to be here. Um, and I've 
quite astounded actually. We have a very um, engaged and involved advisory committee, as you can see, because most of them are here. So I was planning on introducing them, but they don't have to since they are here. But um, the other folks um, who I'd like to mention are Michael Frederick. She's the president of SALT, which is an art design firm just across the parking lot here. Um, Lydia Griffey, she also sits on the board of ACDA, and she is a senior principal at Stamtech. Dan Newman, he's heavily involved in the Anchorage Chamber of Commerce and um, is the founder and president of Alaska Premier Options. And everyone else is here, but I just, yeah, we, we, they are consistently engaged with, um, with our fund, providing support ad advice, uh, not just our meetings every month, but they are on hand at all times. And so we, we're very lucky to have their expertise to draw from. And so I'll cover the quanti quantitative wins. Aaron will call, call, cover some of the qualitative ones. Before us, there weren't nine investment funds. There wasn't an angel investment fund structure within the state of Alaska within probably 20 years. Uh, and they operate across the early stage, largely of the capital continuum. Because we're operating earlier than most people are comfortable with, that's why we're generating such additional strong private leverage, right? We're helping uh, transactions occur. And they all do different things. They're everything from microfinance to helping commercialize initial companies to um, significant growth equity for more mature firms. $50 million impact on the private sector side. This is the number one thing about our program that's remarkable. Uh, we track um, not only the initial dollar for dollar investment, but every year we talk to our fund managers. What is the additional debt and equity in your portfolio? Uh, right now, for every dollar we invest, nearly $7.20 is invested in the community. That gives us a $50 million plus impact of our operations across seven years. 140 jobs, similarly, data coming back from fund managers. We ask them to give us the FTEs of their portfolio at the beginning of every year. And finally, again, uh, exceeding expectations, $1.68 million in returns at this stage of the life cycle. Uh, we're excited about all of this, and we think it's really remarkable. And we think it's really remarkable for a community like Anchorage that's far away from the rest of the United States. So just, we talk about the economic and the financial returns, but um, one of the most important aspects of our job is the community returns. And so when we talk about um, who we're really working for, it's the founders. And I know many of you in this room are probably familiar with Piper Foster Wilder. She um, founded 60 Hertz a few years ago, actually at a startup weekend, um, pitched the idea, and has now carried it through to international recognition. She wins pitch competitions across the world. I just watched her um, present to a group from Norway, um, the Resource Development Council, and everybody knew her from Norway. Um, so the, the, she exemplifies who we continue to support and want to find um, funding so that she can see her vision to success. And so this is an example of an ecosystem stakeholder model. It comes from MIT, but at the center of it, you have the entrepreneur. To the right of that, you have the risk capital and funding mechanism. That's us and we're the government. So we're covering kind of two out of five spots here. Um, the university and the programs that they run, more and more involved, especially thanks to Christy Bell, one of our advisory committee members, and corporate support. Um, and of course, we've got people like Lydia from Stantec and, uh, and Tom from, um, I think it's North Star Wind these days, with North Wind, even, formerly of Siri. Uh, so we're doing the best we can to replicate that model. But here's the other part of the win. All of this stuff that you see here, a lot of it didn't exist before the 49th State Angel Fund. It just didn't. When we started operations, there was virtually nothing. Now, there are some logos that are there and would stay there, but the focus on entrepreneurship across this state, uh, this fund has helped spark. And after seven years, being able to kind of stay with that uh, initial challenge of deploying that capital, I think we've really got something that's um, very powerful for the community. And if any of you made it out to an Alaska Startup Week event this week, uh, thank you. It means a lot to the people of our community to see you there supporting them. Um, but there's a lot of focus in this space so that Alaska can create companies for its own future. Uh, I'll turn things over to Aaron again. So um, this 
last, or it was this year, we brought our um, advisory committee together for a full day strategy session. Um, we we're incredibly grateful for their, their time. But we put together a three-year roadmap to discuss, um, to, to figure out how we can better and continually serve our community. And what we came up with was this year, we are working with um, someone to put together an ecosystem analysis. We wanna identify key infrastructure that um, other cities have across the nation and figure out maybe some areas that we can provide support or, um, or figure out what we're doing really well. Um, so that we can be better at that going forward. And then we're gonna take this infrastructure analysis and build upon it a stronger, inclusive entrepreneurship effort. Um, it's almost like we're in the enlightenment phase, so we work closely with the Hoffman Foundation and follow them, and so inclusive entrepreneurship is more than just a buzzword. It's something we're seeking um, with every single one of our programs. So we, have, we want to include all of Anchorage and ensure that it continues to diversify. Um, and then in 2021, once we've rolled up the inclusive entrepreneurship efforts into the infrastructure analysis, we'll work on founder development. So um, education, access to resources, somebody has a brilliant idea and taking that next step into launching that into an actual business, it's terrifying, it's overwhelming. And there are a lot of educational um, tools out there, but we wanna help we want to help our founders and, and answer their needs. So by 2021, we'll have we'll this all up together to support our founders more comprehensively. So Aaron's in the driver's seat on all these on all these activities. Uh, my strategic focus is trying to identify how we can continue our work uh, and potentially find new sources of capital to deploy. Uh, most importantly, sources of capital that um, continue to fuel activity. Uh, and that are some sort of income generating opportunity for the city. Uh, I, this is a difficult um, this is a difficult thing to accomplish. And as we discussed, that J curve venture investing is very volatile. So we're trying to look at new structures and new development finance efforts that will provide returns to the city, allow us to continue our work and potentially expand it. Uh, that's going to take a really long time. Um, it takes one to two years to build any kind of investment fund, uh, and we're just starting to zero in on the potential kinds of investment funds that might work for all of us. And then we still have to maintain our core activities, that is invest in the community, see the capital deployed, uh, host quarterly and annual programs for the benefit of the community, and partner with others, and I think that's one thing that we've learned in the last few years is we're more successful when we work with the university when we work with the Alaska Investors Network, when we work with Alaska Growth Capital, we're more successful in just kind of extending our reach. So we'll look to do more of that. And in closing, um, not only are we adding you to the email list, uh, not only can we thank you so much for your support over the years, which we really appreciate. We have a tradition, and the tradition is Pun Husky. Uh, Pun Husky shows up on all our slides, so forgive me for that. Um, thank you very much for supporting us, and we look forward to discussing the fun. Right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Mr. Number. I have a question. So, um, one industry that we regulate very closely, and it's one of the few industries that's really growing in this city and state, is cannabis. And I was wondering if you have a fund that invests in cannabis businesses. <sighs> no is the answer. Uh, initially, alcohol, cannabis, <coughs> firearms were things that we stayed away from. Is there any legal prohibition of, from you guys doing that, or just a politic of just choice? Potentially on the federal side, quite probably. So with the federal Actually, capital, definitively, yes. Definitive, okay. yeah. With federal capital, that would be difficult to do. Right, because the initial capital was federal. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Weddleton? Um, what we're all dying to know is give us a list of the businesses and anchors that are getting money through you. Well, that we own a part of. Yeah. You own a part of. <coughs> we all own a part of. <laughs> so uh, I think one of the easiest ways to do that is to talk about the fund. So our policy is we let the fund managers disclose whatever they want, and we disclose what we've invested in a fund manager. So it's public knowledge that the Anchorage Opportunity Fund invested in the dome. 
uh, that that occurred and that helped that, um, that asset get rebuilt in our community. It's public knowledge that Launch Alaska has invested in 60 hertz microgrids and we saw Piper. Um, off the top of my head, all 31 transactions would take me some time. Um, I, I can't do it immediately. And also the, the confidentiality provisions of this fund were passed by the Anchorage Assembly. Mm -hmm. So if, if we want to talk about it, we certainly can. Um, and I, I can kind of Google what's public while I sit here, but my brain's a little slow. I think what he's getting at is, do we own any piece of wild scoops? It's <laughs> <laughs> really good. Uh, oh, yeah. Afraid I can't answer that. No, so. but Heather's choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's also yes. It's also, also common knowledge, knowledge that we <laughs> we've invested in Heather's choice. Cool. Uh, yes, Mr. Bill Pop. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Chair, I uh, wanted to just uh, comment on one uh, element of uh, Assemblymember Wellington's question. Um, none of the money has been <coughs> handed to anybody. It has gone through an incredibly painful, long, protracted due diligence process in terms of the fund investments that the staff of the 49th State Angel Fund has gone through, and that the funds themselves also go through an incredible amount of work to identify businesses that are worthy for the investment. And Joe, I, I would say I'm not, and, and to my fellow members of the committee who have all been advising and bearing witness to this whole project, process that we've been going through for the last seven years. Dozens and dozens of pitches have been made for one investment actually being deployed. So I just want to be real clear, because there's a misperception in some circles that this is some form of grant. It's not. It's done under the most strictest of business principles in terms of how bonds are invested. I think the fact that you're only about 60% invested shows that you must be fairly risk averse. Uh, I think that there's a couple things happening there. I think one, that governmental capital comes with strings and we have some strings and that is less attractive for the private sector. I think, quite honestly, I think that the, the founder activity wasn't as strong or significant when we started and it's taken time. Um, you have to build all of this, not just the investing part. It all kind of has to come up together. Thank you. Ms. Salatov. Um, thank you. Um, so do you look to, I mean, you like, you want, you're looking for community impact, but the metrics you're using as jobs, return on investment, and I forget the other one, I apologize. Um, what, how does social entrepreneurship play into this? Because we have businesses built around a model of social giving um, that may not meet some of your other factors, or is that just not something you guys are interested with your investment? parameters? So we have a blended economic development and financial return focus. Uh, we have invested and I think our activity was key in helping get the set up shop fund spun up. Um, and we were conscious of that need within our community. So that is where I, that's kind of, that was the way I'd respond is we've helped create, I think, one of the most functional and best microfinance funds in Alaska. Um, so that's an aspect of social entrepreneurship and reaching diverse communities. Um, but we expect a return on our dollar. Um, now, we don't, we recognize that a return on our dollar also comes with an economic and community benefit. And we're working real hard to return the entire fund. This is very difficult to do. And governmental funds typically struggle in this space. So we're aiming to be in the top five, 10%. With regard to set up shop, how do you um, intend to return on your investment? Like, can you tell me a little bit more about that when you say that? I don't understand because I understand set up shop, but like, yeah, maybe a few more steps along the way. We made an investment into the fund at a very low, remarkably low interest rate, lower than probably most costs of capital, and uh, that will. Um, we made that investment, and over time, they need to pay that investment back to the city. They being the community setup land shop. trust? Yeah. Can you tell us what set up shop is? I'm sorry. I'll let you take set up shop. Sure. Um, so it's spun out, of, well, not spun out, of, but it's a program, it's, it's almost a small business accelerator program put together by the English Community Land Trust. So um, they have a, num a variety, they, well, they're focused on neighborhoods 
specific entrepreneurs, so Spinard, Mountain Dew, um, and their, one of their last cohorts was focused on food-related businesses. Um, they partook in our uh, Startup Week event, so we heard a number of pitches from some of um, their more, most recent graduates, one of which actually is partnered with Alaska Growth Capital, so they focus on Alaska Native um, entrepreneurs here in Anchorage as well. So it's it's not, you know, ex, um, massive growth targeting companies, but really the fundamentals of business basic. You jogged my memory, went to one yeah. of them. Thank you. Um, so I had one question, and then Mr. Peterson. So in 2020, uh, when you out outlined the plan, the term that you used was inclusive entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Could you define that? Sure. Um, <coughs> Anchorage itself is a city is one of the most diverse. You know, it's one of the most diverse cities in the country. So we um, want. There are a number of underserved neighborhoods in our community, and we hope to lower the barrier for entry for folks who live in these underserved <coughs> neighborhoods. So um, that means increasing access and awareness from some of our investor communities because we have direct access to our investors. Um, and it's also a learning process because we're sort of in an enlightened stage of entrepreneurship where a lot of resources from the Kauffman Foundation and other national organizations are really starting to just learn what inclusive means and how to really integrate that into our ecosystem building efforts. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Peterson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And so uh, these entrepreneurs, how, how much of their own capital are they required to invest to, to uh, secure the entry into this program? Is well, there a minimum percentage or? Some of them have nothing. So that is, um, that they invest nothing. Um, but sometimes the fund manager says, when they encounter an entrepreneur, it means, well, we can't do this transaction unless, you know, you're willing to risk some of your own personal capital. And that happens fairly frequently. We see often deals, transactions delayed, um, things not occur because there's just, there's, <coughs> they're, they're trying to continue to get buy-in from all parties. So to, to answer your question, definitely entrepreneurs put skin in the game when they can. Thank you. Yeah, Ms. Alton. Um, thank you. So the few that have been named have been kind of product-based investment companies. Do you have service-based investments as well? Things that businesses that aren't producing a thing but are doing something instead of value? I'm processing that. I, I'm not sure, and I need to think about it. Um, you know, the, the adage is um, people don't scale. So it's, it's really hard for venture functions and equity functions to invest in uh, service businesses. It's not that they don't make money or they won't do well. They won't do remarkably well. Some of them will. But sort of the, you know, the, the conventional wisdom is often find a product, bring it to scale, send it to a big market, uh, grow your company, create jobs. It's just harder in, in service. It doesn't mean it's impossible. Thank you. Mr. France? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, given the economic environment, has that affected the level of interest in the program? And then also, could you speak to the selection process? I know it's not a um, How I and mean, what are you looking for in general? How do you make those determinations? Certainly. Um, so we have selection process. Can somebody, I'm sorry economic environment, if there's any impact on the interest level in the program? It's interesting. We thought that there would be a chilling effect during some parts of the recession. And I think at the initial part of the recession when it hit, certainly there was. It was kind of that 2015-16 period where things were a little rocky. Um, 2017, we saw a lot of deployment. 2018 as well. So that was positive. Um, in terms of selection process, this is really a lot of best practice, angel capital association, venture investing uh, stuff that the fund managers are using. So, and I, I think that one thing we shouldn't lose track of is this is still really difficult. This is still Alaska 
this is in Seattle, this is in Bend, Oregon, and this is in Portland. Um, it's harder for investors who are seeking that financial return to step forward and put that dollar out. So they're asking a lot of tough questions. And going back to Mr. Peterson's comment, some of it is, if it's not financial skin in the game, what's your personal skin in the game? Have you left your job? Are you willing to leave your job? Are you willing to leave your job for a lower salary if we fund that salary? Those kinds of things. Follow up. Yeah. Um, what kind of outreach do you have to potential private investors? Well, I think that's actually our strongest stakeholder group. Um, it has historically, we started with high net worth individuals, which is the world of angel investing. Slowly, we engaged some of the Alaska Native corporations. Slowly we engaged some um, some corporations in, in other spaces. But that's been tough because this is risk capital and you know until the business model is proven, uh, I think investors are going to be somewhat skeptical to get involved in the space. Now three, four years ago again when all this ecosystem wasn't here, this was a much harder conversation to have. It's easier now. It's easier when Startup Week is in Channel 2 and KTVA. It's a lot lot easier now that time has passed. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dunbar? Yeah, I was curious about the sort of scalability of the fund itself. So let's say that the economy does heat up and you guys start doing very well and start getting a lot more return on investment. How is it structured? Do you, do you hire more staff? Um, at some point, does it pay a dividend to the city? Does it always reinvest in itself? Like, what does it look like if it does grow significantly? At this exact moment, um, it's a three-year operating reserve uh, with anything above the three-year operating reserve targeted for community reinvestment and um, operated under the guidance of the CFO, myself, and the mayor. Uh, we would love nothing more than to have this opportunity I think that having a function like this at City Hall is, re it, so period, having a function like this at City Hall is very unique. Yeah. Um, there were only a handful of other municipalities that did this, and I, I believe we're probably the most successful. Um, the potential to create other financial operations is, is something that could be of value to our city, I think. So, Try to triple what you just said. So we have one. You have one full-time employee now. Well, there's me and Aaron. Oh, so you, okay. So you're both. Okay. Yeah. I I, um, I was a little confused if you were working somewhere else and kind of half volunteering for us. But you also are full-time employee. I'm an FTE, Yeah. And your salaries come out of this fund or come out of general funds? They come out of the Anchorage Angel Evergreen Fund. Okay. Direct financial support has been very small from the city. Good. Um, I mean, from our perspective, good. <laughs> so Bor borderline. I'm not sure it's zero, but it's close. Good. Um, so, so yeah. But I guess then perhaps if it did get, is it the kind of thing that you would need another full time employee if it got larger, or is it the kind of thing that could scale a lot without any more staff? I think it depends on the that whole fun two discussion that we were having. It depends on the kind of uh, business model that we pursue and the capital that's available and how we draw that down in fees. Um, but I think that I think that there's really a lot of unique things that we could do because we're here. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of promise. So you said that the, so the CFO... Yeah, I, said, I was gonna expand on some of those things. That the, the real focus, you know, from the office is it, it's not there to pay a dividend to the Municipality. It's purely there to provide the economic impacts that you're seeing. And as it grows, those impacts become greater. We have no interest in <coughs> hiring a whole bunch of people to run it. I mean, the outsourced aspect of it works great. We get more money, we hire more managers to yeah. do the actual investing work. Uh, with the whole idea of the more capital you have available, the more business opportunity there is. And that's kind of the vision we're rolling with. We're not trying to build any kind of large entity. We're just trying to be a source of capital to support economic development broadly. Okay, one more question. So the, and this is a much smaller scale, but the permanent fund has a variety of um, protections and it's explicitly separated from the rest of government. I mean, it, for, it, it isn't, uh, there's no equivalent like the governor being involved with the way the mayor is here, and that's obviously so that politics doesn't get involved. 
is what is the influence of the CFO or the mayor if they're saying like for example we want to develop the archive property and a small business is like well we want to help develop the archive property too can they help steer the angel fund towards that so we I, I think that potentially that potential exists we've bridged two administrations we've bridged the Sullivan administration where we were founded uh, the Berkowitz administration um, I have not experienced anything in that realm. I think it's always worth thinking, and I think even the permanent fund is subject to some of this. It's always worth thinking about how, when you're in a political environment, you're trying to make financial decisions, how that evolves, right? But there have there have been no problems thus far. And I guess I would expand on that, that it's, when we're talking about the outsourced model, we really <coughs> delegate the investment decision to these managers, and our oversight is did you follow your due diligence process? So we're not going to say, Gee, Forrest, you should go out and invest in this. We're going to, you're going to come to us and say, Well, I found this investment, and you know there was. I, I won't go into the details, but there was an investment where we made them do a lot of extra work uh, before we let them proceed. And very specifically to the archives, uh, that just couldn't be because the way the structures. So one for one, one dollar for us with one dollar of private capital um, would be the way it would work, uh, and so it would have. It, it, it's just very unlikely that that would be the case. Thank you. All right, I don't see any other questions. Well, thank you so much. Th thank you very much, and please, if you get an opportunity to check in with any of the entrepreneurs, we're going to add you all to our email list. <laughs> Um, your your words of encouragement mean a lot to the people of this community. Thank you. In fact, tomorrow there's a diversity and inclusive the inclusive business luncheon panel to close out our startup week at the Mountain View Boys and Girls Club. So, what time? Twelve to two. Can we buy a ticket or can we just show up? Ooh, I don't want ticket. Oh no, it's fine. No, I, no, I do. We'll, we'll cover you. <laughs> no, yeah. I'll, I'll buy a ticket. I'm just curious. No, they're five bucks if you want to eat, oh. but she just wants to make sure she has a seat. That's all. That's it. All right. Oh, we're getting a raise.